Major funding for this production is provided by American Bank of Lafayette, the financial choice of the 80s. Additional funding provided by the Friends of LPB. I want to tell you about a strange journey. It's probably the strangest journey that uh, you're going to hear about this year and next year. It begins in a tavern in Metairie, Louisiana, a place called Gennaro's Tavern Restaurant. And then it goes on to India. Now, I didn't say Indiana. I said India. And from India, Broadway, and uh, winning a prestigious Tony Award. Now, that peculiar journey... Uh, is in a capsule of the life of our guest, the brilliant Broadway choreographer and native of Metairie, Louisiana, Peter Gennaro. Hello, Pete. How are you? Welcome home. Thank you. Pete, uh, your folks immigrated from Italy. Right, from Sicily. From Sicily. And uh, they had that tavern there in Metairie, Gennaro's. It's still there, is it not? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as a child, did you hang around the tavern? What, what kind of childhood well, did Peter Gennaro have? <laughs> It, it wasn't there as a child. I mean, when I was little yes. in Metairie, my father did many things. My father did all sorts of things. And uh, I usually work with him, my brother and I. And as a, Italians usually work together, the whole family. And I, I remember a grocery store many years ago in which we lived in the rear of it and while we were going to school. And uh, then after I got out of school, high school, which was Metairie High School, I uh, wasn't long, maybe three or four years before I got into the Army. Let me, let, let's back up a little. What's your first memory of dance having some attraction for you? What? I just loved to dance. I remember dancing when I was four and five years old. I always liked to dance. And uh, I it just seemed to come to me naturally. And as we say in the South, we seem, some of us have a lot of rhythm. <laughs> and being from New Orleans and Metairie in that area, I had a lot of rhythm. And I worked, I lived across the street from a Baptist church, which gave me more rhythm. More <laughs> rhythm. Peter, uh, when did you begin uh, taking formal dance lessons? Um, I guess I started taking a tap class every now and then uh, when I was about 12. Because... Uh, Prior to that, I remember I had entered a couple of the neighborhood dance contests. They used to have dance contests in the neighborhood theaters when they would dish out dishes and all that stuff. Yes. And I used to do pretty good in those. And then I, I decided, I remember cutting grass, and every time I got a little money, I would go take a class in the neighborhood, a woman by the name of June Myers. And uh, I took tap and acrobatic. In retrospect, were you a natural? Just I think yeah. so, yes, sir. I uh, used to love it. I remember always doing it. Peter, your folks took you to the Sanger one time, didn't they? Was that a big experience? What Was that your first show that you saw, a real show? Yeah, I saw a, a wonderful stage show there. I, I can hardly remember it. I remember some Adagio team was on the show. They were all in silver body. You know, their body was painted silver. And they must, they, at the time, they looked fantastic to me. <laughs> and did, do you think, or, or is it too far back, that something clicked and you said, you know, this is for me, I like that? I always wanted to do that. I mean, I never knew that I would do it because I didn't think my 
family was into that. My mother loved me to dance, and they loved me to dance, except that when it came time to leaving home and going to New York to do it, uh, it was quite a shock to them, <laughs> to so my father especially. <laughs> Peter, the, uh, 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 I guess, next milestone in your life, you went into the military, and uh, uh, for those people who complained about being sent here or there, you got sent not only to India, but to rural India, did you not? Right. And, and you were in what, what branch of the service? I was in uh, ordnance. In ordnance? Yes. You were a sergeant in ordnance? I was a sergeant in ordnance, and I did administrative work. Now, tell us about this, this peculiar thing that, that transpired to your life in India that really got you started. Well, as I said, I had studied a little bit. You know, I studied, had some tap lessons. I also studied with a man in, uh, in New Orleans by the name of uh, Peter Villery and a lady who, who uh, taught for him, taught me tap dancing. And um, uh, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> You're in India. Right. And I, when I got to India, um, somehow my papers got lost in the Army. I guess that happened a lot. Happen. And I landed up in Chabwa, which is the uh, northeastern tip of India, which Mind is you. right before you go over the, which we call the hump, which were the Himalayas, which went into, which you flew over to China. And um, I just, I, I got there, and I was doing the same thing I did uh, before. I was just doing administrative work, and I thought I was going to go there to fight or do something. I don't really know <laughs> at, th at this time. But uh, there happened to be some two or three gentlemen in the company who had been in the theater before, who were from New York City. And um, we start talking, and love of the theater and love of dancing and whatever, and. And uh, they had been, one of them was an agent uh, before Goodness he got in the Army. The other was a, in the theater, in the drama, drama department. And I told them I could dance a little bit. And they said, well, show us. So I showed them. And they said, you should audition for an entertainment unit that was in Calcutta, India. And it was, the head of it was Melvin Douglas. Melvin Douglas. Who was my commanding officer when I got into it. So he had come through the area in Chabwa, and I had worked up a routine. And um, one of the guys who played the piano played for me. And next thing you know, I was entertaining soldiers <laughs> throughout India. We oh went all over. We went from New Delhi to Ceylon and to Burma and to whatever. We did one night stands where they flew us in uh, B-19s from one spot to another. And we'd set up, we'd set up a stage on a, on, um, big trailer trucks, and that's where we did the show. There was about eight guys in the show, and we'd do everything. We'd do the women's part, the men's everything. part, <laughs> and I was like the leading dancer. Uh, uh, it they were desperate because I wasn't that good. It occurs to me that those people who think Lana Turner being discovered uh, in that drugstore in Hollywood, who think that's the all-time unusual place to be discovered, I think you're being discovered in Chadwa, <laughs> India, tops that. In the mud. In the Dancing mud in, in India. the mud. <laughs> so uh, you had this experience in the service in India, and you finally got out of the service, came on home to New Orleans. Right. What'd you do then? I stayed home. I worked for my father for about six months and uh, decided that I just had to pursue my lifelong ambition. So and I was entitled, New York. I was entitled to, to uh, a schooling uh, through the GI Bill, so I went to New York and I went to the American Theater Wing. Did you study dance or acting or I both? I studied everything. You studied everything? I studied everything and I had a full, it was like a college course. I went in the morning at 9, we finished at 6, and then we worked with experimental groups later. In fact, next weekend I'm going to the White House because Catherine Dunham, who was my, you've heard of Catherine Yes, Dunham. of course. She had a company in New York and a big school, and she was, I got into her school through the American Theater Wing, which was primitive and all types of dancing. She had a full, uh, full courses in classic ballet, uh, classical Spanish, uh, every course, acting, Strasbourg taught there, and... Um, so you had some pretty good education. I had a great 
dance education. I did it all day for two years. Then your first real pro job was with the Chicago-based San Carlo Opera Company. That's right. And not only was it your first job, but something happened to Peter Gennaro with the San Carlo Opera Company in Chicago. He fell in love with a young lady who was a member of the ballet corps, is that That's correct? Right. And married her. Yes, sir. And she was also a dancer. Right. But uh, 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 in, as in all beautiful love stories, later when uh, uh, you all had children, uh, she retired from the professional career. And, That's right. Uh, Peter, so you stayed in Chicago, fell in love, got married, and then uh, what came next? Road companies? Well, we, we, went, we moved back to New Orleans, my wife and I, and we went back to work for my father for another six months. In, in the tavern? <laughs> yes. And uh, I finally realized that, that I really had to do something about what I really wanted to do. And we had worked in the San Carlo Opera Company, so uh, the lady who did the choreography had called my wife and I to ask us if we would come to Indianapolis and uh, do the leading dance things in Carmen, the opera. Yes. And, of course, we jumped at it, yes. and uh, we did it, the performance. We went back to New York and scrounged around for a while. My wife got a job dancing. So either one of us worked, <laughs> you know, but she worked first. She was on television at the time, and she did a lot of things. And Prior to uh, going on the air, you told me that you thought that uh, one of your difficulties was that you were not tall enough. And, and I remarked, it's so interesting because you, you've turned into one of the, the great dancers and choreographers in the uh, uh, American musical theater, the Tommy Tune, who's also a very great, he was too tall. You weren't yeah. tall enough, but so much for all these restrictions that uh, uh, people uh, uh, put on us. I, I think it says something very wonderful. Well, I think what happened, both Tommy Tune and myself, is that we uh, we were in a, gotten to a position where we could do something for ourselves. Yes. Like I was on Perry Como show for three years, and when I did that show. I danced on it because I had just gotten out of Pajama Game, which was... I was, was that your first Broadway show, Pajama no, Game? No, no, that was about the third Broadway show. But in Pajama Game, I did the show-stopping number with two S other people. Steam Heat. That's right, with Carol Haney and Buzz Miller. And Carol Haney is no longer, longer here, but she was one of the great musical comedy dancers of my time, like Gwen Verdon is today and Cheetah Rivera is today and Anne Ryan King. Anyway, um, so I got on the Como show, and they let me dance, and it was such a hit that they asked me to dance about once a month. And also, I had a group of dancers called the Peter Gennaro Dancers who danced on the show regularly. Yes. And with all of that, three years' time, we did some wonderful things. We had a terrific director and producer and uh, a and it was quite a hit show. Now, you did some teaching along the way, and you had a very interesting student, a young lady from Philadelphia, did you not? Right. And her name was? Grace Kelly. Grace Kelly. What, what was your impression of her? She was a very young girl, I'm sure. What, what well, was she had just done Country Girl, I see. her movie. And I really didn't. The first day she was in class, I didn't really know who she was. I didn't recognize her. I had a lot of students, and it was an actor singers class movement for actors and singers. And she and Rita Gam yes. came to class. And Rita Gam I knew because I had seen her and I'd seen her and I knew she would she was a dancer formerly. And uh, when I got home my wife checked the roll call and she said, Did you know that Grace Kelly was in this <laughs> class? And I said, no, Oh I didn't. God, well that's another boo boo on my <laughs> part. But anyway, um, finally uh, she came to class regularly for a while and Next thing you know, I was offered a job to do it, a Broadway show. And it happened to be one of Grace Kelly's dear friends. His name is Gant Gaither. Yes. In fact, he was one of the best men. Uh, he was her best man at her wedding. At her wedding. When she married. And um, I never knew it, and she never said it, but that's how I got the job. Peter, uh, you co choreographed uh, uh, what uh, many people consider the great American musical, West Side Story. Yes. That must have been an extraordinary realization yeah, for somebody in your business. 
Well, you see, Cheetah Rivera was one of my students when I taught uh, classes in the dance classes she came. And she was a phenomenal dancer then, but she was primarily a ballet dancer. But she had a wonderful feeling for the, that jazz. Yes. So she was in the, in the show, and uh, I was lucky to help get to help. Jerry Robbins asked me to help him with the show because it had, there was a lot of uh, Latin dancing in it, calypso, not, well, not really calypso, but real jazzy things in it and uh, Puerto Rican things in it. Now, let's jump ahead because I think uh, perhaps your most interesting experience was about to happen. Someone came to you and had an idea for a musical about, of all things, Little Orphan Annie. What did you think? Did you think they were crazy? Did it appeal to you? I would have said no chance, you know. Well, it didn't. I didn't take the job. <laughs> and they, uh, it, the first time I was asked to do it, I thought, oh, my God, how are you going to do a show like that? Whatever. Uh, they tried it out for the longest time in good speed, which is in the Connecticut. Office, yeah. And they try it. It's like workshop things. And my friend, Martin Charnin, who was in West Side Story <laughs> as a, one of the actors, was, it was his idea. He conceived the thing. It made him a very rich man. It ran for five years on Broadway, did it yes, not? Yes, and it's still running all over in all kinds of theaters now, but I have nothing to do with that anymore. The moment it left Broadway, that finished me with the show. But it did real well by you while it... Oh, yes. For example, uh, 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 yes. one of the nice things that happened to Peter Gennaro of Metairie, he won something called the Tony which uh, uh, is the highest accolade that uh, the theater can give its own. Yeah, that was quite a surprise to me, actually. Pretty because thrilling, it, I bet. Huh? Well, I didn't feel there was that much dancing in the show, but what there was was good. Someone mm -hmm. agreed. You also won the Drama Desk Award yes, for I that did. show. Uh, Peter has received, a, 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 let me not gloss over, just about every award that the professional theater can give, including honorary doctorates from uh, universities. Now, you have a, a, a both a daughter and a son. Tell us about them. Are they following in the old man's footsteps? Well, my son uh, was an actor. He'd done uh, some musical comedy things, and he did something with uh, Dreyfus, uh, Julius Caesar, and Brook Band Theater in Brooklyn. He was in Godspell. He's a graduate of uh, Neighborhood Playhouse which is a very fine acting school. He's also a graduate of Notre Dame University, but it was not the kind of a school to go to if you wanted to be an actor. I see. It just happened that he got involved with acting at Notre Dame in his last year. And we went to see him in a play, and he was wonderful. So we encouraged him. And he went to New York, came back to New York, studied for two years and started doing some things, and but finally got sick of it about two years ago. He started working for my manager, who is my, who is a theatrical lawyer. And Michael started working for him, and my manager became very interested in him and talked him into going to law school at night. Something? So he goes to Fordham at night. He has another year to go to become a theatrical lawyer, or to become a lawyer. A lawyer. And to go in business with my manager. And uh, he works in the law office in daytime. How about your daughter? And my daughter is some terrific dancer. She's a better dancer than I Good. was at her age. <laughs> She's 24. Uh, how helpful is, was that to those two kids to have uh, Peter Gennaro as a father? In other words, must be a lot different going up uh, for auditions and things with Peter Gennaro as your father as going from Metairie, right. Gennaro's Tavern, to New York as Peter Gennaro. It's quite a challenge for them. I mean, to have someone who's done so well in the business, yes. you know, because it's, it's very rough. The business is very rough to get some place. I just feel that I've been very lucky. Peter, uh, what, th th this is a question that I, 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 want, I ask whenever we have somebody who's been in the entertainment business, a professional like yourself. I always ask it. W do you advise kids who, who wanted to, to go into the entertainment business, the show business, to go to New York? It, is that your counsel to them? If they're very talented, I suggest they do that. But if they're they're not. <laughs> and you never know sometimes. You know, sometimes uh, uh, young people come from other places to come to New York and they're not really prepared for New York. It, I mean, you really have to be pretty terrific to get a chorus job. My daughter 
is a sensational dancer and she has a problem getting a job in the chorus because she's too small. She's another small person, but she also does choreography. She does, you know, she does exactly what I do and she's going to have to make her own way like I did. But as I said, there are a lot of kids that come to New York who are really not prepared, you know, and some of them are, a lot of them are, but a lot of them are not. Uh, for uh, many years, uh, uh, several years, Peter was producer and director at Radio City Music Hall, that monstrous stage with uh, 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 technical effects beyond imagination. And my question is, and I ask this on behalf of the men in the audience, how was it to work with the Rockettes year after year after They're year? They're terrific. They're terrific. I did some of their numbers, and I love working with them. They're a nice bunch of girls. They're very disciplined. They work very hard. You see, when they're doing, when they're in a show at the music hall, when I was there, when they were doing four shows a day, what they're doing is they're doing four shows a day, and in between, they work on the new show that's coming up. I see. So they tap pretty much. How they tough do. is it to, to, to make it, to become a rocket? Well, um... How many people try her, out, for example? Oh, lots. Lots of girls every year try out for the rocket. Their requirements are very rigid. They have to be 5'6". They have to be 5'6". Five, like 5'6", five, 5'7", five, 5'6", five, 5'7", five, 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 is almost perfect rocket. There may be one or two 5'8ers, but... Um, and they ha have to tap extremely well. And they have to have a good background in dancing, but they must be precision dancers. They cannot be solo dancers. They have to be able to look like one person. And we put them all in, you know, wigs and everything to make them, they look, look alike. Has anyone ever gone from the Rockettes that you know of to uh, uh, becoming a, a lead or a, a solo performer? Oh, yes. I, I, don't, I don't know them personally, but I know well, one or two of the girls that were there when I was there have been in Broadway shows. Oh, sure. You know, they're good dancers. Um, I do know that one of them, I think one of them became Miss America. Oh, sure. But that was before I was there. <laughs> now, mm, Peter... Or something, uh, some important person and went into the movies. Mm. It took Peter uh, to get here for this interview about 10 hours from New York because of the weather. Uh, we're... Uh, uh, taping this show in uh, late November, and uh, uh, I was feeling very sorry for him mm -hmm. until I realized what his last assignment has been, his last professional assignment, and I wish you'd share it with our audience what you did up in Atlantic City. I have to do that, right? <laughs> <It's American. laughs> okay. I just uh, staged the Million Dollar Pet, Penthouse Pet of the Year in Las Vegas. I mean, in um, Atlantic City. How much did you have to pay him to do that, Peter? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Surely you didn't that's accept what a salary. That's, too, what, all, be no that's what all my friends are asking me. Of course. Everyone wanted to come with me to do it. But I spent 10 days there, and I worked very hard. But they're very nice ladies, and they work very hard. They're from, uh, they were from 28 countries. And they were all quite beautiful ladies, very well-behaved ladies. And did you, I asked before we went on the air, had you guessed right about who was going to win? I had, I had picked about five people whom I thought might be in the top whatever, and they were. Uh, one of them was not, which I was surprised. I think everybody was surprised, but whatever. You, you know. But uh, the girl who won, uh, I thought was quite a beautiful girl. Peter, uh, you worked with uh, uh, all of the greats, uh, Maurice Chevalier, Judy Garland. What, what was your impression of Judy Garland? What, what's a legend uh, like her like? In, in well, she was one of my favorite people. I mean, I thought she was one of the most talented ladies I ever knew. She was a very wonderful, nice lady. She did have many problems. Were well, they obvious a, when you worked with her? Mm, not really. I mean, she was just a nice lady. But whatever her problem, personal problems were, was... It didn't get in the way? No. It might have been some performances that she did, but I didn't experience that. I mean, I read a lot about her, but when I worked with her, she was like God to me. How about Maurice Chevalier? Was he as charming off lovely, camera as he was? Lovely, lovely man. Uh, 
then you worked, you've worked with Bob Hope and, of course, Perry Como for years. Well, they were all terrific yeah. people. Is, is, is Perry Como as laid back and relaxed a man as he well, appears to be? he's just like that. I mean, he, you know, he's just like that. But uh, look at him. He's, a, he's just as terrific today as yeah, he was then. He's just as handsome as he's yeah. ever been. In fact, I'm going to see him at the White House on next weekend because I understand he's going to sing at, this, at, the, uh, at a uh, reception. Peter, uh, you also had an opportunity to work with Fred Astaire. Yes. Now, for a dancer, choreographer, what kind of experience was that? Well, it was quite an experience. Well, for one thing, uh, I had hoped that he wanted to do something, but he didn't want to dance because it was just, it was right before Bing Crosby died. I see. And they were both on the show. And I was called in to do something for Bing Crosby's daughter, who has since become quite a big star in Dallas. Yes. Um, and it was really something. I had worked with Bing before because yes. Bing, I did a Sullivan show where Bing uh, sang and I danced while he sang. Ed Sullivan, in my opinion, is the most interesting person in the history of America. Theater. There was no obvious talent of any kind. He was not even a good master of ceremonies. And yet, perhaps one of the great success stories of all time. He had a style, you know. He had a, his people laughed sometimes, but I mean, he was terrific. Was he and a nice guy to work yeah, with? Yeah, was terrific with me, you know, and terrific with everyone. We were, to him, we were part of his, we were important to a man like that. I mean, he wanted talent on his show, and he introduced lots of terrific people, like the Beatles and, you know, Barbara, well, Barbara Streisand. Yes. So many wonderful people he introduced on his show. Peter, uh, it's just been a pleasure uh, having you back in Louisiana. We're all uh, uh, very proud of your astonishing uh, accomplishments. And uh, we look forward to uh, 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 some more Tonys, some more Emmys, some more shows choreographed by. I hope so. Will you do any more dancing? I um, feel that. It, I should hang up my shoes. <laughs> I like it, and I still dance. No one who's seen you recently agrees with you, I must tell you. I, I, everybody says, why don't you dance? And, but, I mean, look, you reach a certain age, you know, uh, and uh, if you can't, uh, you feel you don't look right on camera, you shouldn't do it. But uh, I, I might do it again. I don't know. Ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen, from Gennaro's Tavern in Metairie and from Broadway, New York, the great Peter Gennaro. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you very much. Major funding for this production is provided by American Bank of Lafayette, the financial choice of the 80s. Additional funding provided by the Friends of LPB.